Megalodon, member of an extinct species of megatooth shark that is considered to be the largest shark that ever lived. With teeth the size of a man's hand, and jaws that could cleave whales in half, few creatures of the past have been able to capture the imagination of man like the Megalodon. In this documentary, we will explore the fascinating history of the Megalodon, starting with its discovery, details about how the creature lived, and finally assessing its impacts on modern culture. Fossils attributed to Megalodon have been found dating from the early Miocene Epoch, which began about 23 million years ago, to the end of the Pleistocene Epoch, about 3 million years ago. The word Megalodon is a compound of Greek root words meaning giant tooth. A fitting name as according to Renaissance accounts, gigantic triangular fossil teeth have been found embedded in rocky formations and were once believed to be petrified teeth of dragons. These ideas were dispelled in 1667 by Danish naturalist Nicholas Steno, who recognized them as shark teeth. He described his findings in the book The Head of a Shark Dissected, which also contained an illustration of a megalodon tooth. Almost 200 years later, Swiss naturalist Louis Agris gave the shark its initial scientific name, Cocarodon megalodon. In his 1843 work, Researches sur les poissons fossiles based on the tooth's remains. English paleontologist Charles Davy Sherborne, in 1928, listed an 1835 series of articles by Agis as the first scientific description of a megalodon. The teeth of megalodon are metamorphically similar to those of a great white shark, and on the basis of this observation, Agis assigned the megalodon to the genus Carcharodon. Although some paleontologists assert that megalodon and modern-day white sharks evolved within the same Carcharodon lineage on the basis of their serrated teeth, others classify megalodon within the lineage of megatooth sharks, whose origins trace back to the Cretaceous period from about 145 million to 66 million years ago. A tooth analysis study was performed in 2012 that suggests that modern-day white sharks evolved from lamented sharks about 5 million years ago during the late Miocene or early Pleistocene epoch. The study notes that the pattern of serrations and other similarities in tooth structure between megalodon and modern-day white sharks could be a product of convergent evolution, wherein similar characteristics evolve independently in different lineages suggesting that possibly Megalodon, while still related to modern-day white sharks, it is not likely the case that modern-day white sharks evolved directly from Megalodon or were very closely related. Fossilized remains of Megalodon have been found in shallow tropical and temperate seas along coastlines and continental shelf regions of all continents of the Earth except Antarctica. During the early and middle parts of the Miocene Epoch, which lasted from 23 million to 5.3 million years ago, large seaways separated North America from South America and Europe and Asia from Africa and the Middle East, which likely facilitated the movement from one ocean basin to another. Throughout the Miocene, Megalodon distribution expanded from the pockets located in the Caribbean and Mediterranean seas, in the Bay of Bengal, and along the coasts of California and southern Australia, to encompass waters off the coast of northern Europe, South America, southern Africa, New Zealand, and East Asia. During the Pleistocene Epoch, however, Megalodon's geographic range contracted significantly, and it was extinct by the end of the Epoch. Megalodon was one of the largest fish ever known, a designation based on the discoveries of hundreds of fossilized teeth, two vertebral columns, and a handful of individual vertebrae. Tooth-shaped similarities between Megalodon and modern-day great white sharks, as mentioned earlier, point to the fact that Megalodon likely resembled these sharks in appearance, that is, a bulky torpedo-shaped fish with a conical snout, large pectoral and dorsal fins, and a strong crescent-shaped tail. Estimates of body size and length are calculated using the statistical relationship between the size of Megalodon's fossilized teeth and the teeth and body mass of modern-day great white sharks and other living relatives. This data suggests that mature adult Megalodons had an average length of 10 meters or about 35 feet. The largest specimens measuring about 18 meters or 60 feet long, about the size of a modern-day school bus. Some scientists, however, contend that the largest forms may have even measured up to 25 meters or 80 feet long. 
Studies estimate that the adult body mass ranged from 30 metric tons to more than 65 metric tons, or about 66,000 pounds to 150,000 pounds, and the adult females being larger both in length and mass than the adult males, just like modern day white sharks. And megalodon teeth, while similar to modern day great white sharks, differ from white shark teeth in that they are larger and thicker, the serrations on each tooth occurring in regular intervals and possessing a borlet, a dark chevron shaped region near the tooth's root. The largest extant megalodon tooth measures 18 centimeters or 7 inches in length, almost three times larger than those of modern day white sharks which are typically about 5 centimeters or 2 inches long. In addition, megalodon possessed a ferocious bite. Its bite diameter was about 3 meters or 10 feet across, several times larger than the bite diameter of an average white shark today. The first attempt to reconstruct the jaw of a megalodon was made by Dashford Bean in 1909, displayed at the American Museum of Natural History. From the dimensions of this jaw reconstruction, it was hypothesized that megalodon could have approached 30 meters or almost 100 feet in length. Dean had overestimated the size of the cartilage of both jaws, causing it to be too tall. In 1973, John E. Randall, an ichthologist, used the enamel height from the base of the enamel portion of the tooth to its tip to measure the length of the megalodon, yielding a maximum length of about 13 meters or 45 feet. Most modern day estimations of megalodon size come out to around 15 to 20 meters, or roughly 45 to 60 feet in length, making it one of the largest fish ever discovered. However, arguably the most iconic feature of Megalodon is its massive teeth. Consequently, the most common fossils of Megalodon are its teeth. Megalodon teeth can measure over 7 inches or 180 millimeters in length. Teeth of this size are the largest by far compared to any other shark species and allow Megalodon to claim the title of the king of the sharks. There are even anecdotal reports of teeth larger than those found in museum collections. Gordon Hubble from Gainesville, Florida possesses an upper anterior megalodon tooth whose maximum height is 7.5 inches or 18 centimeters, one of the largest known tooth specimens from a megalodon in existence. In 1989, a nearly complete set of megalodon teeth was discovered in Saitama, Japan. Another nearly complete set of megalodon teeth was excavated from the Yorktown formations in the United States and served as the basis of a jaw reconstruction of the megalodon at the Museum of Natural History in the United States. Based on these discoveries, an artificial dental formula was put together for the megalodon in 1996. Megalodon, like most sharks, had a very robust jaw definition and had over 250 teeth in said jaws, spanning five total rows. It is possible that large megalodon individuals had jaws spanning roughly 2 meters or 6 to 7 feet across. These teeth were also serrated, which improved efficiency in cutting through flesh and bone of their prey. In 2008, a team of scientists conducted an experiment to determine the bite force of a 2.5 meter or 8 foot long great white shark, and then isometrically scaled the results for its maximum size and the conservative minimum and maximum body mass of a megalodon. They estimated a megalodon's bite force would be between 100,000 to 180,000 newtons. This compared to the relatively measly 18,000 newtons of a modern day great white shark. If these estimates hold correct, this means that megalodon may likely have had the most powerful bite of any animal in the history of the world, with only large carnivorous dinosaurs such as Tyrannosaurus rex or large species of alligators possibly coming close to the power of megalodon's bite. So how did Megalodon live in its natural environment? Megalodon at the height of its power was likely found in all oceans of the world. This evidenced by the fact that was mentioned earlier about their fossilized teeth being found on all continents of the earth with the exception of Antarctica. A likely key to their wide range being their huge size and highly adapted body heat regulation. Megalodon is thought to have managed its body temperature in a manner similar to that of modern day great white sharks, in that it was not exclusively cold-blooded, like most fish. 
White sharks generate heat through the contraction of their swimming muscles, and this heat raises the temperature of parts of the shark's body above that of the surrounding water, an adaptation called regional endothermy, which is a type of warm-bloodedness. This adaptation might have allowed Megalodon to swim and hunt in colder waters, giving it exclusive access to prey that lived in those locations. In addition to being one of the world's largest fish that ever lived, Megalodon was also likely one of the largest marine predators that has ever existed. Megalodon was an apex predator or top carnivore in the marine environments it inhabited. It likely preyed upon fish, baleen whales, toothed whales, sirenians, and seals. Young megalodons likely sought out smaller prey, while adults hunted larger whales. Mature megalodons likely did not have any predators, but newly birthed and juvenile individuals may have been vulnerable to other large predatory sharks such as great hammerheads and toothed whales whose ranges and nurseries are thought to have overlapped with those of the Megalodon from the end of the Miocene and throughout the Pleistocene. So what was Megalodon's strategy in taking down some of the largest marine mammals to ever exist? Even modern day sharks often employ complex hunting strategies to engage large prey animals. Megalodon bite marks on whale fossils suggest that it employed different hunting strategies against large prey. One particular specimen, the remains of a 9 meter or 30 foot long undescribed Miocene baleen whale, provided the first opportunity to quantitatively analyze its attack behavior. Unlike great whites, which target the underbelly of their prey, Megalodon probably targeted the heart and lungs with their thick and massive teeth adapted for biting through thick fat and tough bone as indicated by the massive bite marks inflicted to the rib cage and other tough bony areas on the whale's remains. Furthermore, attack patterns could differ from prey of different sizes. Fossilized remains of smaller whales, for example, suggest that they were rammed with great force from below before being killed and eaten, this based on compression fractures in their ribs and sternums. There is also evidence that a possible separate hunting strategy existed for attacking ancient sperm whales. On a fossilized tooth of an ancient sperm whale, there is a distinct mark from a giant shark tooth that suggests that a megalodon may have aimed for the head of the sperm whale in order to inflict the fatal bite, leaving the massive mark on the creature's tooth. While scavenging behavior cannot be ruled out as a possibility, the placement of the bite mark is more consistent with predatory attacks than feeding by scavenging. The jaw is not a particularly nutritious area for the shark to feed on or focus on. The fact that the bite marks were found on the tooth's roots further suggests that the shark broke the whale's jaw during the bite, suggesting the bite was extremely powerful. The fossil is also notable as it stands as the first known instance of an antagonistic interaction between ancient sperm whales and a megalodon shark, recorded in the fossil record. During the Pleistocene, larger whales started to appear. Megalodon apparently further refined its hunting strategies to cope with these larger whales. Numerous fossilized flipper bones and tail vertebrae of large whales from the Pleistocene have been found with megalodon bite marks, which suggest the megalodon would immobilize the large whale before killing and feeding on it. Megalodon were contemporaneous with whale-eating toothed whales as well, which were also probably among the era's largest apex predators and provided competition. Some attained gigantic sizes, such as Leviathan, which was estimated to be about 14 meters to 18 meters or 45 to 60 feet in length, just as large as most megalodon. Megalodon may also have subjected white sharks to competitive exclusion at the time, as the fossil record indicates that other shark species avoided regions it inhabited by mainly keeping to the colder waters of the time. In areas where their ranges seem to have overlapped, such as the Pleistocene Baja California, it is possible that the megalodon and the great white shark occupied the area at different times of year while following different migratory prey. Megalodon probably also had a tendency for cannibalism, much like contemporary sharks, and is inferred they lived solitary lives. So how did Megalodon raise its young? Megalodon is thought to have produced live young. It is not known, however, whether the species actually produced live young, or if they laid eggs. However, for most contemporary large sharks of modern times, they produce live young, and this is why this inference has been inferred by most of the scientific community. Estimates of body size using juvenile teeth suggest that newly birthed young may have been at least 2 meters or 6 to 7 feet in length. Few details are known about megalodon courtship, but the species appears to have used nurseries for its young. 
A 2010 study identified a megalodon nursery along the Panamanian coast, which was characterized by the presence of juvenile teeth from various stages of life. Scientists posit that this shallow warm water nursery provided young megalodons with access to a diverse array of smaller and more abundant prey items, and enabled adults to better intercept attacks from other predatory shark species such as great hammerhead sharks, large-toothed whales such as leviathan, and other megalodons. As the young sharks grew older, it is thought they would make forays into deeper water in pursuit of larger prey animals. Young megalodons grew fast. In 2021, a study published findings calculating the growth rate of an approximately 9-meter or 30-foot individual based on the presumable annual growth rate shown by the rings on its vertebrae. They estimated the individual died at 46 years of age with a growth rate of 16 centimeters or 6 inches per year, a length of 2 meters or 6.5 feet at birth. For a 15 meter or 50 foot individual, which they considered to have been the maximum size attainable for Megalodon, this would equate to a lifespan of 88 to 100 years. An exceptional case in the fossil record suggests that juvenile megalodon may also have occasionally attacked much larger whales. Three tooth marks from an apparent 4 to 7 meter or 13 to 23 foot long Pleistocene megalodon were found on the ribs of an ancestral blue or humpback whale that showed suggested evidence of subsequent healing, with the bite suspected to have been inflicted by a juvenile megalodon. Little is known about how individuals dispersed after they matured. Since Megalodon is thought to have occupied an ecological niche similar to that of a great white shark, some studies have assumed that Megalodon likely ranged over areas comparable in size to that of a modern day white shark, or about 1,000 square kilometers or 380 square miles. So what caused the downfall of the largest shark to ever live? Megalodon's geographic distribution expanded during the Miocene, but contracted during the Pleistocene as populations declined. Initially, scientists thought that the decline was due to swings in ocean temperatures related to climate change, possibly caused by the closing of the seaway separating North and South America about 3 million years ago, which deflected ocean currents and caused other changes in the ocean circulation. By 2016, however, studies had shown that Megalodon's geographic distribution did not increase appreciably during warm periods or decrease appreciably during cold periods, suggesting that the species' demise was not dependent on climatic changes alone. These studies suggested that shifting food chain dynamics may have been the primary factor in Megalodon's demise. As the availability of its primary food source, baleen whales, decreased in the number of its competitors, smaller predatory sharks such as great white sharks, and whales such as killer whales, increased. The Earth had experienced a number of changes during the time period that Megalodon existed which affected the marine life. A cooling trend started in the Oglacine, or 35 million years ago, ultimately leading to glaciation at the poles. Geological events changed currents and precipitation. Among these were the closure of the Central American Seaway and changes in the ancient Tethys Ocean, contributing to the cooling of the oceans. The stalling of the Gulf Stream prevented nutrient-rich water from reaching major marine ecosystems, which may have negatively affected its food sources. The largest fluctuation of sea levels in the Cenozoic era occurred in the Pelo Pleistocene between 5 million to 12,000 years ago, due to the expansion of glaciers at Earth's poles which negatively impacted coastal environments and may have contributed to Megalodon's extinction along with those of several other marine megafauna species. These oceanographic changes, in particular the sea level drops, may have restricted many of the suitable shallow warm nursery sites for Megalodon, thus hindering their reproduction heavily. Nursery areas are pivotal for the survival of many shark species, in part because they protect their juveniles from predation. Marine mammals attained their greatest diversity during the Miocene, such as baleen whales with over 20 recognized Miocene genera in comparison to only 6 extant genera today. Such diversity presented an ideal setting to support a super predator such as Megalodon. By the end of the Miocene, however, many species of these whales had gone extinct and surviving species may have become faster swimmers and thus more elusive prey for the giant shark. 
Furthermore, the closure of the Central American Seaway, tropical whales decreased in diversity and abundance. The extinction of Megalodon correlates with the decline of many of the small whale lineages, and it is possible that it was quite dependent on them for a source of food. The cooling of the oceans during the Pleistocene might have restricted the access of Megalodon to the polar regions, depriving it of the large whales which had migrated there. Competition from other predators of marine mammals, such as sperm whales, which appeared in the Miocene, and orcas and great white sharks, which started to appear in the Pleistocene, may also have contributed to the decline and eventual extinction of Megalodon. The extinction of Megalodon set the stage for further changes in marine communities. The average body size of baleen whales increased significantly after its disappearance, although possibly due to other climate-related causes. The extinction of Megalodon had a positive impact on the other apex predators of the time as well, such as the great white shark, in some cases spreading to regions where Megalodon became absent. So what impacts has the Megalodon had on our modern culture? Megalodon has been portrayed in many works of fiction, including films and novels, and continues to be a popular subject for fiction involving sea monsters. Even till this day, there are supposed sightings of Megalodons occurring. Reports of supposedly fresh Megalodon teeth, such as those found by HMS Challenger in 1873, were dated in 1959 by zoologist Vladimir Tursinsky to be around 11,000 to 20,000 years old, helping popularize claims of recent megalodon survival amongst cryptozoologists. However, these claims are now widely discredited and are probably teeth that were well preserved by a thick mineral crust of precipitate manganese dioxide, and so had a lower decomposition rate and retained a white color during their fossilization. Fossilized megalodon teeth can vary in color from off-white to dark browns and grays. Some fossilized teeth may have been redeposited into a younger rock stratum and thus appeared younger than they actually were. The claims that megalodon could remain elusive in the depths, similar to the megamouth shark which was discovered in 1976, or the famous coelocanth fish that was thought to be extinct for millions of years before being fished up to the surface in the 1900s, are unlikely as the shark lived in warm coastal waters and could not survive in the cold and nutrient-poor deep-sea environment it would need to inhabit in order to remain hidden in the depths. A recent supposed sighting of one of these megalodons occurred in September of 2022, when to the horror of shark researchers they saw a 15-meter shark-shaped blob on their underwater movement detector. The giant red blob looked and moved like a shark and would have weighed an estimated 40 tons. For a moment, the researchers thought they were looking at a megalodon, a prehistoric shark that had been extinct for almost 3 million years. But as the researchers from the Atlantic Shark Institute watched in perplexment and fascination, the alarming red blobs scattered into thousands of smaller fish. What the researchers were actually looking at was a crowded school of Atlantic mackerel which just happened to take the shape of a giant shark. Atlantic mackerel tend to huddle close together as a hunting technique. Rather than individually hunt for plankton and other morsels, mackerel crowd together in tightly packed phalanxes. But why did the researchers have megalodon on the brain? This is likely due to the contemporary fiction about megalodon surviving into modern times that was pioneered by the 1997 novel Meg, a novel of deep terror by Stephen Alton in its subsequent sequels. Following the book's widespread popularity, Megalodon subsequently began to feature in films, such as the 2003 direct-to-video Shark Attack 3 Megalodon, and later The Meg, a 2018 film based on the 1997 book which grossed over $500 million at the box office. Animal Planet's pseudo-documentary Mermaids, The Body Found, included an encounter 1.6 million years ago between a pot of mermaids and a megalodon. Later, in August 2013, the Discovery Channel opened its annual Shark Week series with another film for television, Megalodon, The Monster Shark Lives, a controversial docufiction about the creature that presented alleged evidence in order to suggest that Megalodon was still alive in the world's oceans to this very day. This program received criticism for being completely fictional and for inadequately disclosing its fictional nature to viewers. For example, all the supposed scientists depicted were paid actors, and there was no disclosure in the documentary itself that it was fictional. 
In a poll by Discovery, 73% of the viewers of the documentary thought that Megalodon was not extinct and was still alive in the world's oceans to this very day. In 2014, Discovery re-aired The Monster Shark Lives along with a new one-hour program, Megalodon, The New Evidence, and an additional fictionalized program entitled Shark of Darkness, Wrath of Submarine, resulting in further backlash from media sources and the scientific community alike. But despite the criticisms, Megalodon the Monster Shark Lives was a huge rating success with almost 5 million concurrent viewers, the most for any Shark Week episode up until that point in time. These pieces of pseudoscience media seem to have inspired increasing sightings and reports of Megalodons, despite any hard evidence to support their existence in our modern times. With almost all Megalodon sightings that are reported today awfully being simple misidentifications of known species of modern sharks, such as basking and whale sharks. With a vast majority of the scientific community agreeing an animal that is so large and whose diet consisted of mainly marine mammals that need to come to the surface to breathe, means that it is nearly impossible in our modern age that these creatures are still swimming today's oceans without any hard evidence of their existence. With this being said, it is doubtful that the sightings will decrease anytime soon, as now the Megalodon is one of the most recognizable extinct animals to date, along with the common fears that humans harbor for both deep water and sharks alike, means that the largest shark that ever lived will continue to inspire fear and fascination for many generations to come.